And we begin this Sunday morning with breaking news as New York Attorney General Letitia James tries to close in on President Donald Trump, preparing to seize some of the former president's real estate assets. If he's unable to secure a bond or deposit of $464 million by tomorrow in his civil fraud case, the New York AG filing judgments in Westchester County, the first indication that the state is preparing to seize Trump's golf course and private estate north of Manhattan. One week after Judge Arthur Engeron made official his $454 million judgment against Trump and his sons, Donald Jr. and Eric Trump. The 45th president's legal team on Monday said that it was nearly impossible to secure a bond of this size after he was turned down by 30 insurance companies. Trump also telling Fox News Digital any money on hand was earmarked for his presidential campaign charging the judgment represents more election interference. Instead, he is vowing to fight the ruling all the way to the Supreme Court. Joining me now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the executive vice president of the Trump Organization. He is President Trump's son, Eric Trump. Eric, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Th thanks, Maria. So the first question, of course, is how are you dealing with this? What is your plan to meet this judgment? Well, so sad. First of all, I'm a guy that grew up in New York. My father built a skyline of New York, and this is an election interference. And they go out and they ask you to post a half a billion dollar bond. Maria, I want to put that in context. I went out to the largest sureties in the world, the largest sureties in the country. They said, Eric, the last time we've seen a bond of that size is when we did the big dig in Boston, which was a $25 billion construction project that lasted almost 25 years. They're trying to put my father out of business. They're trying to take all his resources that he would otherwise put into his own campaign for, for presidency. This is New York State. This is what we're seeing. Letitia James campaigned on this promise, and now they're, they're making him do something that's not physically possible. Putting up a half a billion dollar bond, bonds that size don't exist in this country. A $10 million bond is a large bond. A $15 million bond is an enormous bond. A half a billion dollar bond? And Maria, remember one thing. The banks all testified Trump was the greatest borrower we've ever had. I mean, there, there was no victim. There's, this is a crooked system with a crooked attorney general in a crooked court that literally wants to put my father out of business. And, and you know who they're actually going to hurt? They're going to hurt the thousands and thousands of employees that we have in New York State. These are janitors. These are doormen. These are you know, people that work in commercial buildings. They're going to hurt those individuals, not, not the executive. They're going to hurt those individuals. How about all the contractors that we employ to do build outs? How about you know, everybody else that relies on our family, thousands of people, yeah. all for their own political vendetta? I, it's I'm insane. Tr I'm trying to understand how this number came about, $454 million or $464 million, and what the real number is. How did they come up with this number? You know what? It, it was it was a crooked number. They, there, there are no victims. There there is no number. Right. The number should be zero. My my father's run a you know, great company. I run a great company. We've never had a default. We've never missed a payment. We've never been in a breach of covenant. Every single one of our lenders came out, and he goes out, and the judge comes out and says, you know, I want to take the scourgement. I want to go back and I want to take interest rates that you paid on mortgages and put it up to 10, 11, 12 percent, and go back. 20 years, and we already won this in the appellate court. The appellate court already said that there's a statute of limitation, that 99 percent of what he put in there is thrown out. But, Maria, th this isn't about this. This is a lawfare. They want to hurt my father, who is winning the presidential race right now. He's beating Biden in every single poll, in every single swing state. He came out and said he wants to put hundreds of millions of dollars of his own money into his campaign. Right. And how do they deprive him of that? They have that judge that you have on the screen right there come up with an astronomical number, give you zero time to post a bond, a bond that's not even commercially available in the United States. It's this, not, this is it, it, no one's ever seen a bond th this size. Every single person, when I came to them saying, hey, can I get a half billion dollar bond? Maria, they were laughing. They were laughing. Yeah. Top executives of the largest surety companies had never seen anything of this size. And what, they're gonna start seizing assets? If he can't put up something that's not available, so, in the United I mean, States? You said there were no victims, no one lost any money, you've paid everything back in, in plenty of time. So have you heard from the business community in, in New York? Are you disappointed that you're not hearing more uh, outrage from others? I mean, I've certainly heard from Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. He says he's questioning whether or not he'll ever sure. do business in New York again because of this. 
Sure. And by the way, and Joe Rogan's talking about it every single day, and everybody else is talking about it. The entire Florida real estate community is laughing. The judge said that Mar-a-Lago was worth $18 million. 18 million. You can't buy anything on the island of Palm Beach for 18 million, let alone by far the largest house, a house that's probably worth a billion dollars. I mean, Maria, this is the entire Florida real estate community is laughing at this. The entire real estate community in general is petrified of New York. You know how much business New York State is losing because of this? Because they see this radical. And you even have the governor, Kathy Hochul, comes out and say, you know, we're going to do this to Trump, but we're not going to do it to any of you. Don't worry about it. We'll do it to him, but we won't do it to any of you. Maria, they're trying to deprive him of his cash. They want to bankrupt him. Uh, they want to hurt him so badly. And it's going to backfire because he's going to win this in November. And everybody in this country universally knows exactly what these people are doing. So so whatever money he has on hand, he wanted to put that toward the election and campaigning, which is, of course, what what you have just said, that this is election interference. Will you be able to put up any money? Is there a plan in terms of putting up a portion of it? We, we've offered that. We've 100 percent offered that. And we're waiting for the appellate division. And I hope the appellate division comes back with something that's very sensible. Well, we've we've offered that. We've tried to be very reasonable. And we're going to win this entire case because the entire case is is crazy. You had a runaway judge who just ruled against something that, again, the appellate division has already knocked out 85 percent of this case. But that's not the point. This is this is legal lawfare. They, they don't care. They just want to hurt a man. And, and um, again, they're sending tremors across this country. And by the way, Maria, I want to mention one other thing. People internationally are watching the charade. Mm. America's losing our standing in the world when they see this. People invest in America from all over the planet because they know we're the safe harbor, that this kind of stuff can't exist and doesn't exist. And now they're seeing this exist in the United States. You know the damage that does to our country? Eric, you and your brother have also been ordered to, to pay uh, a judgment. Uh, what role did you have in any of this? Absolutely nothing. And the judge, even in his final you know, closing days, said that we had nothing to do with it. So all of a sudden, when we we're putting a judgment, you know, that we each have to pay four or five million dollars and we can't do business in New York, which the appellate court has already stayed. I'm saying they're saying, wait, wait a second. You're in, in, in your final order. You said that we had nothing to do with this case. And now all of a sudden we can't do. Maria, the more that they can name the Trumps and the more that they can hurt us, the more they think it's going to benefit Joe Biden in 2024. And, what they and don't realize is, again, Go ahead. Please. Go back to the reason that this is happening in the beginning. Um, because they say he overflated his assets valuations. You had auditors looking at those valuations, correct? Yeah, and you had a disclaimer that's three pages long saying these are our values. You know, we believe Mar a Lago's worth this. And by the way, the values were very low. We believe mar a is this. So we believe Doral's worth this. But if you disagree with any of these numbers, go out and do your own valuations. You know, real estate subjective. We believe we have the best properties in the world. The values have proven to be low. I sold a hotel in Washington, D.C. that was substantially less money on the statement of financial condition than what I sold the hotel for. Mm. You know, it's, it's crazy. The only assets we have ever sold, we sold for more than were ever listed. But again, these points don't matter to these people, Maria. They're, they're trying to hurt an individual. What is the capacity that President Trump has to continue campaigning? Should they be able to take this kind of money from him? What happens next if they start seizing assets? And can they do that tomorrow? Well, well in terms of my father, this isn't his first rodeo. Um, what he's had to fight through for the last eight years, I can tell you as a son, is, is unthinkable. For every bullet, for every attack that you watch on your show or on TV, Maria, I can tell you there's a thousand behind the scenes that we deal with as a family. The amount of arrows, the amount of shots that they've taken at this man, and he never, ever stops. He's the toughest guy I've ever met in my entire life. He's going to win in November. I don't care what they do to him. I don't care if they strip him of every single building, of every single property. He will never, ever, ever stop fighting. That's his conviction. That's who he is as a family. That's, frankly, who we are as a family. And, you know, we've seen this game before, and they can only cry wolf so many times, Maria. And, um, yep. All of America is onto it. They, they, yeah. they know what this, they, they know what's happening. You know, Letitia James campaigned on this promise to do exactly yeah. this. That's and right. it's a disgrace to New York State. And I hope the appellate court fixes this problem. Eric, thank you so much for taking this on and for joining us this morning. Of course, we'll be watching this and following it firsthand. Trump Organization Executive Vice President Eric Trump. Thank you, sir.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.